This episode of the Memory Palace is brought to you by Article. We are big fans of Article here at the Memory Palace. This room of the palace, um, the ballroom where I'm sitting right now, um, it's palatial, trust me, um, is lit beautifully uh, by a legit beautiful lamp from Article. This stuff is of extraordinarily high quality. Um, it is truly lovely furniture that's influenced by you know mid-century modern and Scandinavian styles. Um, I have a feeling you're really going to like it. If you've never checked it out before, you know, summer and warmer weather is right around the corner here in the Northern Hemisphere. And they really have fantastic outdoor furniture. It's totally worth checking out. Go to article.com and take a look. The stuff looks great and it is made with all these outdoor friendly materials like teak and acacia wood and granite and galvanized steel and rattan. And it comes to you with a flat delivery fee of $49, regardless of what you're buying and how big the order is. So go to www.article.com slash memory palace and get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. That is www.article.com slash memory palace. Go check it out. The Memory Palace is brought to you by Rate Marketplace. If you're a homeowner, did you know it takes just minutes to see if you're eligible to save up to $4,000 a year? Rate Marketplace is a home financing engine that uses a fast and easy online process. With Rate Marketplace, you can drop the paperwork and in a few minutes get a custom mortgage solution from your phone or computer. If you want to get started and see your savings at ratemarketplace.com slash memory palace. That's ratemarketplace.com slash memory palace. They are an equal housing lender. MLS number 113-7890. This is the Memory Palace. I'm Nate DeMeo. The man awoke with a start and threw up. He could barely see. It was just before dawn. He smelled something strange and sweet in the air there in his bedroom. He turned to his wife and asked her to run to the kitchen and make sure that the pilot light in the stove was still on, that there wasn't a gas leak. She went to get up, but found that her legs no longer worked. Later that night, on August 31st, 1944, a young woman across town, her husband off to war, awoke alone in her bed to the sound of her daughter crying and coughing in the next room. She went to get up, but found that her legs no longer worked. The next night, around 11.30, a woman, Mrs. Kearney, was getting ready for bed. She smelled something strange. She walked around her dark house trying to find the source until her legs started tingling and she found they no longer worked. She screamed, he would too, and her sister came running in from down the hall. She called the police. When they came, she told them that the strange smell seemed to be coming in through her sister's bedroom window. The police didn't find anything. They left and left the woman alone. Two hours later, Mrs. Kearney's husband, Bert, pulled into the driveway after his shift as a taxi driver. There, beneath his bedroom window, while his wife slept just inside, was a strange figure dressed in black, crouching in the darkness. Bert would later tell the police that the figure, tall and thin, ran off into the woods and vanished. The good people of Mattoon, Illinois were terrified. Over the course of several nights, 21 of them were awoken, those who were able to sleep at all with the smell of gas coming through the window, or to find that they were unable to move, or to find the strange man in black standing, looking at them through their windows, before disappearing into the night. The police would come, and there'd be nothing, no footprints, nothing at all, but still the strange man in black kept coming. The police added officers to the late shift. The FBI was brought in from Springfield. Citizen patrols took to the streets with flashlights and guns, trying to catch the strange man in black. But they didn't, and he kept coming, terrorizing people in the night. A few times he left little clues, a torn screen, some trampled brush. Beulah Cordes of North 21st Street came home late one night to find a white piece of cloth on her porch. She picked it up and smelled it, and doubled over, vomiting and screaming that her mouth and her throat were burning. When the cops arrived and ran tests on the cloth, they determined that whatever caused Mrs. Cordes to become sick had vanished from the cloth like the strange man in the night. And then it was over. The strange man in black was gone, as mysteriously as he had arrived. And when he was gone, some people said he wasn't a man at all, that he was something other, something from beyond this world, 
Even today, the people of Metun say that sometimes in early fall, as they lie awake in the dark, they can hear him tapping at their windows. Nah, they don't. Although, having been to Mattoon, it might give them something to do. I think they don't, anyway. I haven't done, like, a poll or anything, but they shouldn't. Because the man in black, the man the papers call the Mad Gasser of Mattoon, or the Anesthetic Prowler, or my favorite, the Phantom Anesthetist, probably didn't exist. And I don't mean that in a ghost-don't-exist sort of way. I mean, there probably wasn't even a creepy weirdo running around town. Or a guy with a spray can trying to knock people out to break in and steal their stuff. The strange smell, the vomiting, the burning lips and throats may have been caused by some pre-EPA, pre-Clean Air Act emissions from a couple of industrial plants nearby. That's what the chief of police declared shortly after the frantic call stopped coming into his station. But eventually, opinion coalesced around another theory. The mad gasser of Mattoon was a case of mass hysteria. Those first attacks were all in the victims' heads. And then the idea of the attacks got into everyone's heads. A psychologist first put the theory forward a few years later in the early 50s. And though his reason for it, that the women were hysterical because their men were off fighting World War II, sort of icky and sexist, his mass hysteria theory has held up. Meaning the good people of Mattoon, Illinois, in late summer, early fall, 1944, joined the people of Strasbourg, Germany, who danced uncontrollably for days on end in 1518. The nuns who couldn't stop screaming and squirming at a convent in Würzburg, Germany in 1749. The other nuns who would meow for several hours a day in Austria later that century. The students at a mission school near Lake Tanganyika who started laughing one afternoon in 1963 and couldn't stop. And then their laughter spread throughout the surrounding villages. Or the 600 girls at an all-girls school in Mexico, who in 2006 became paralyzed and nauseous. Just like the people of Mattoon, after the strange man in black came in the night. The strange man in black who didn't exist at all. Or did he? Nah, I'm just screwing with you, he totally didn't.